Today, I'm reviewing the Nanlite Forza 60. Thank you for coming back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Robert Hall. I'm an editorial photographer from Michigan. I make videos on photography and lighting, so hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of that. Let's dive in. The Forza 60 is Nanlite's smallest COB or chip on board LED. I knew it was compact before I got it, but I was still shocked when I opened the case for the first time. Without its yoke, it has about the same footprint as a Sony mirrorless camera. The carrying case is similar to most of the COB LEDs coming out these days. It has handles, a detachable shoulder strap, and has padded compartments for each piece. The case holds the light, yoke, reflector, and AC adapter. Back to the size. The Nanlite Forza is ridiculously small. It's less than half the cubic size of the Godox SL60 watt. This makes it great as a light rig for booming and close setups. Its light output is impressive too. It's a tiny bit brighter than the Godox SL60, although not enough to make a significant difference. I also tested against the Godox VL300, which is the reigning champ when it comes to output efficiency. Since the VL300 has a perfectly linear output, I brought the output down to 20% to match the Forza's 60 watts. The Forza 60 was 4 tenths of a stop brighter in a softbox at the same distance from the light meter. The percentage control on the Forza is not linear. From 100 to 50%, it lost a perfect one stop, but from 50 to 25, the output dropped 1.3 stops, and from 25 to 6, it drops 4 stops of light instead of 2. While not linear, this does give it an impressive 8.3 stop range of power. I did use this light for stills when I was shooting a hybrid project. It was easier to use LED instead of flash so that the videographer and I didn't have to take turns switching out lights to get our shots. I felt the power was appropriate and flexible for indoor shooting. Color accuracy is always a top priority of Nanlite products. Using the stock reflector and testing with the Sekonic C800 colorometer, I found a white balance of 5713 Kelvin, a TLCI of 97, and a CRI of 96.2. It has an 89.8 .8 in the crucial R9 color spectrum, and as typical of LED lately, it's the lowest in the R12 spectrum at 72.3. The CCI is 0.0, .0 which means absolutely no magenta or green tint. The CRI is slightly lower than the compact series, but at 96.2 is still highly competitive with the market. Here's some test footage showing how it renders my skin tones in the softbox using ungraded HLG footage on the Sony a7R4. Controls on the back are extremely simple with an on-off switch, dimmer dial, and control dial. Pressing it on the control dial acts as an enter button for changing features such as the special effects. There are a few effects on here such as flash, storm, TV, and broken bowl, but I find them greatly limited because there's no control over delay, interval, or hertz. And since this COB is daylight only, you'll also have no effects based on color temperature either. I feel the effects won't have too much real world application given their limitations. Now because this is such a small LED, it has a proprietary native mount which looks like a mini Bones attachment. This is compatible with the stock reflector, the FL11 Fresnel, and the Forza 60 softbox. The softbox is a 22 inch hexadecagon shape or 16 sided. Nanlite defines this as being a deep parabolic softbox, but at 12 inches deep, I'd personally call it standard in shape. The softbox is quite expensive at $119, not including the grid, and I found the quick releases for the rods to be very rigid for what I feel should be a lightweight and travel friendly softbox. While I haven't used one, the Fresnel looks much more impressive, including barn doors and offering a spread range of 10 to 45 degrees. I should mention here that the yoke for the Forza 60 feels perfectly built to handle these modifiers. With only three modifiers available for the Forza 60's native mount, it makes it feel quite limited. Thankfully, Nanlite made a Bones adapter as well. The Bones adapter is also the only piece to include an umbrella mount. This opens the door to a wide variety of modifiers, although you're still limited by the plastic stand attachment here, which will not handle the leverage of larger modifiers. Obviously, the size of the Forza 60 makes it a compelling option for portable setups, and I think one of the best examples of this is the battery handle accessory. The handle is comfortable to hold, there's a stand attachment in the center, and it holds two NPF style batteries. You can also hit the battery release button to see how much power is left in each battery. But the most impressive thing is that using two NPF batteries gives you the same peak brightness as if you were plugged into the wall. I know when using the Godox S30, a 30 watt LED, a single NPF battery restricts the power to a paltry 10 watts, so this is a massive perk of the Forza 60. The fan is quiet, comparable to products like the Aperture C300D and Godox VL300. You do have the option to turn the fan off as well. When you do this, the light loses 1.2 stops of output. This is not represented with a dimmer limit, so the light will still display 100% even though it loses output. Overall, the compact size, power 
for its size, color quality, and build quality are all excellent. I feel like this light will best serve those invested into Nanlite's larger COB products like the Forza 300 or Beastly Forza 500. Paired with its Fresnel or Softbox, I think this is a great option for booming and will be a great hair light or accent light as part of a larger lighting kit. It's also a nice compact light for those who are doing on-the-go work and only use lighting sparingly. However, if you're looking instead for a stationary soft key light to record in a regular position such as I am here, I think you'll find more value in Nanlite's compact series or seeking a more budget alternative COB LED. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did. If you have any questions about the Forza 60, go ahead and leave them in the comments and subscribe if you'd like to see more of my videos. Until next time, keep on shooting.